By now, we've already heard about Justin Jefferson getting added to the injured reserve, which means he's going to be out at least the next four weeks. That does not bode well for our Minnesota Vikings as we're currently sitting at one and four. Things are not looking good. And we have a couple tough ball games coming up, one of them being the San Francisco 49ers. So what is next for the Minnesota Vikings? Well, we've talked about the Kirk Cousins trade possibilities at nauseum the past couple weeks. And well, as we sit here right now today, knowing that Justin Jefferson's out for games, our record isn't that great. That could happen. Kirk Cousins could get traded. Now, his situation is a little bit more complicated because he does have that no trade clause. Basically, if we want to trade him, we'd have to go to him first, say, hey, this team wants to trade for uh, for you. Would you be willing to accept that? He can then say yes, or he can be like, yeah, no, I'm staying in Minnesota and make things a little bit more complicated than they have to be. Uh, so that's his situation. There's also a couple other players that have been up for grabs or in the trade speculation, as you will. One of them being K.J. Osborne, wide receiver. I kind of figured this would be one of the trade targets just because he is our third string or second string wide receiver at this point. And there was a reason why we drafted Jordan Addison this year with that 23rd overall pick because we didn't, well, we already knew Adam Thielen was going to be gone, but KJ Osborne, there's still that big question mark. He has some upside to trading him. And another big name is Daniil Hunter. Now I would hate to trade Daniil Hunter just because I still think he's one of the best edge rushers in the National Football League. I mean, he's been on an absolute tear as of recent. We did re-sign him to that restructured uh, contract so that he gets more money this season compared to what he would have got, which was like two or like four million. He wasn't making any money before that restructured deal. But Kevin Seifert, who's an insider for the Minnesota Vikings, really dove in to what is exactly next for us and kind of talked about the trades and what might happen what is plausible and stuff like that. So let's dive right into it. He basically started off by saying, now, no matter how the Vikings adjust, okay, it'll be easier to defend their offense than it had been. Moreover, Jefferson can't return until the October 31st trade deadline, and his absence must be seen in the context of the Vikings' failed effort this summer to sign him to a long-term contract extension. Now, that wasn't really a worry for me because we had some other things we had to deal with. We already knew we were going to sign Justin Jefferson to a contract extension. It was just... It was just kind of a matter of let's talk to his agent. Let's see when he wants to get this deal done. Can we, you know, extend this period of time where we actually get a, a legit number that both sides feel is comfortable with? So we already knew that this contract extension wasn't going to get done lickety split or, or this offense or this offseason, excuse me. It was probably going to get done mid season or like Justin Jefferson said, I'm focused on playing ball. When it gets done, it'll get done. And I know that it will get done. So I was expecting this come uh, uh, or upcoming off season that we'll get that contract extension done. So there's still no worries with that injury with him sitting out four weeks. He's still going to make a buttload of money. That's not going to hinder any of those contract talks. But finally, okay, there are three prominent starters, quarterback Kirk Cousins, linebacker Daniil Hunter, and receiver KJ Osborne, who are on expiring contracts and therefore are potential trade targets. Okay, These guys Definitely have a lot of upside if we're going to trade them. Could get some draft capital, could get some young players and stuff like that, which I would be okay with because it's time to start looking towards next season, especially if we don't win a next uh, another ball game in these next four games, which the Chicago Bears, uh, quite honestly, might give us a run for our money. So look, now in the case of Cousins, now this would uh, especially be complicated. Even if a team stepped up with interest, he could veto any deal because he has a full no trade clause in his contract. Now Cousins also has a free path to free agency in March when he could weigh all offers. Instead of getting traded to a certain team and then signing a contract extension there, he could just ride it out with Minnesota for the rest of the season, kind of just be you know, uh, mean Joe Green or whatever you want to call him and and just struggle with us the whole season, then test free agency where he can go wherever he, he so pleases. Now, meanwhile, the Vikings don't have an heir apparent on their roster. Backup Nick Mullins has been suffering from back stiffness and rookie Jaron Hall, who was the fifth round draft pick, hasn't shown any indication that he's a high end prospect. And I mean, I think we've already all seen that barely played in the preseason. Jaron Hall, to me, was just a kind of a bust pick. I mean, it was one of those picks that how do we waste this fifth round compensatory pick or whatever it was? And uh, it looks like Jaron Hall's out there. Kevin O'Connell liked what he's seen in the draft process and stuff like that. So he was basically just a, a gimme quarterback, probably not going to play at all for us. But Nick Mullins, he's shown that he can go out there and start some games and be all right. But at the same time, like, look, 
I do not want to play a single ball game with one of those guys starting at quarterback for us. Just plain and simple. I do not. All right. Kirk Cousins is our boy. Then Hunter and Osborne and even left guard Ezra Cleveland are also in their final years of the contract or their deals. And it would be easier to make those deals. Now, Hunter's restructured contract prohibits the Vikings from using the franchise or transition tag next spring. As with Cousins, Hunter has a guaranteed trip to free agency if he wants it, which basically means like if he wants to test free agency, he can. Otherwise, he can, you know, pick those contract uh, extension talks back up with the Minnesota Vikings at the end of this season, which I hope to God happens because we need him on the defensive side of things. Keep the veterans around to that young secondary, and hopefully we can build something off that and make it or have an even better defense next season. Now, finally, the decision to draft receiver Jordan Addison at number 23 this past April suggested that they would probably let Osborne depart via free agency. It makes a lot of sense. We have a number one and a number two who are going to be both solid. Jordan Addison currently leads all rookie receivers with the most touchdowns in the National Football League with three, which is some you know definite uh, upside and we like to see that but look as for what we're going to do next let's look towards next season because these next four games we got Chicago Bears and then we have the 49ers uh, it's going to be a rough stretch again like I said earlier the Bears are probably going to give us a run for the money especially if they do what they did to the Washington Commanders who have arguably a way better defense than what we currently have so as long as we can hold on to the ball and do the best to you know, slow down the Bears, DJ Moore and, and Justin Fields, we should be all right. But boy, oh boy, missing Justin Jefferson for the next four weeks is going to be brutal. And I'm telling you, like the article said, we have a better chance of getting a top 10 pick than, well, making the playoffs. So you guys can let me know in the comments what you think the Vikings should do next. Also drop a like and subscribe to the channel. It'd be much, much appreciated. Have a great rest of your day, folks. And Skull Vikes.